Hello, 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 everyone. How are you feeling? Good. How was the lunch? Good. Nice. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to talk about is uh, anybody heard of this framework name Scrum? If you have, just shout out. Okay. Yeah, rugby. Oh. <laughs> and if anybody have used Scrum in one way or another, please shout out again. Okay. How you feel? Uh, do you think that Scrum on its own sufficient enough? And when I'm saying on its own, only if you are using as per the Scrum guide. Not doing anything on top of it, do you think it can do everything what it is promising? No. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So and this is this is what I'm going to talk about. Okay. This is what I'm going to talk about. Few complementary practices which I have experienced while working with many different organizations and all. And I'm going to talk about that. Okay. How those practices help in completing the Scrum. But before we move, let's talk a little bit about the Scrum guide. I have got three st paragraph statement, whatever you call it, from a scrum guide. What's the purpose of scrum? It's already highlighted, hint. Generate value, isn't it? Yeah. The purpose is not to do the scrum well. Purpose is that you are using the scrum to generate the value. If you're using the scrum but not able to generate the value, what's going to happen? Move to Kanban. <laughs> Or move to someone else, somewhere else, isn't it? Okay. So I, this is what I want to talk about first: is that the purpose of Scrum is to generate the value. Okay, that's where the main focus is. If you can't, if you're not delivering that, probably then we are just following the Scrum for the sake of doing it. There is no heart. There is no purpose in it. Okay. And the second and the third statement, which are coming again from the Scrum guide. Scrum is purposefully incomplete. And again, this is not me saying, this is Ken Shueban and Jeff Sutherland saying. And how, to, how we have to make it complete is by adding certain processes, tools, techniques, frameworks, uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And that's what we have to do. Anybody recognize this picture? What's that? Scrum, okay, so bare minimum things of the Scrum as we say that. We got the product backlog driven from the product goal. We are doing the sprint planning, doing the sprint planning, the Scrum team coming together, creating the sprint goal. The sprint goal helping us in creating our plan, which is called as the sprint backlog. Team, they start working on the plan, meet on the uh, daily Scrum, developers, 15 minutes conversation regarding the sprint goal. And then increment has come up, increment get discussed into the sprint review, team come together, find out their continuous improvement, and their cycle starts. That's pretty much what the Scrum is. Isn't it? I forgot to add the definition of done as well, which is part of, I would say, the increment. But ooh, what happens before that? How you have reached even to the product goal? Yeah? It's not like somebody got an idea today and, oh, th come on, let's start doing Scrum from tomorrow. It doesn't happen like that in our company. Has anybody experienced that? You got an idea and from the next day you are doing Scrum? Yeah. Something must have happened before that when you reached here. And also, what happened after that? What you are doing with that increment? Are you releasing it? And even if you are releasing it, is it delivering the value that you initially thought of? Scrum doesn't answer these things, probably. Yeah. And this is where I can say that maybe to generate the value, which is the purpose of the Scrum, generally there could be the three steps, very high level. Identify the value, okay, what the value is, how it helps our businesses, how it helps our customers, and then deliver the value using our teams, and then measure the value as well, and then keep doing that thing. And to me, I think the Scrum pretty much works in that space, delivering the value. 
there are few practices that can help us in the delivering the value as well but what about these two things identification of the value and measuring the value okay you are with me guys yep. okay okay good now how have you got any avengers fan here in the room marvel comics anybody has seen avengers can you recognize this picture thanos how many of you knows thanos not yeah. personally but yes okay yeah not personally but yeah 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 but yeah can you see that this is a glove and in the last or to the oh, before the end game in the avengers with the infinity wars the thanos is looking for those infinity stones those gems which can make its glove very very powerful yeah to me it is something like this okay without these infinity stones i think scrum is pretty much useless to me okay we have to find out these infinity stones to actually make this framework super powerful so that you can just do and half of the population is gone okay <laughs> i am not been paid by marvel comics for the record okay but this is where i can see that okay we need to add these complementary practices to make this awesome framework more awesome okay so what i have done i have come up with list of few complementary practices okay again these are based on some recent work which i have done okay yes there are many many more complementary practices but i will be talking about these few complementary practices today so the first one product management shout out if you feel that without effective product management scrum is useless yep. Yep. yes yeah and here when i'm talking about product management i'm not talking about product management as a job title i'm not talking about product management as a role i'm not product talking about product management as a function i'm talking about product management as a skill we need to have those skills at least with someone yeah any of you works with the scrum team yeah. have or in the past your team struggle with creating the sprint goals yeah. shout out more if you if they have been big 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 problem either they don't create the sprint goal or even if they create the sprint goal they are very much like oh yeah do item uh, a plus d and e yeah yeah yeah, yeah? why they cannot create the sprint goal because there is no product goal or there is no clarity about the product goal why there is no product clarity about the product goal because there is no product strategy who we are building our product for what it is for why we are building it yeah so product vision which actually help us in the overarching goal of the product why we are actually building the things the our higher purpose our north star something that guides us whenever we are lost and when we have got this vision then it help us in creating our strategy which is our high level plan to meet the product vision yeah then you can turn it into the product road map something an actionable the lower level plan as well again to meet that product strategy as well yes there are so many different thing i can add into the product management but i have just highlighted these three main ones yeah who is looking after these things who should be looking after these things let let me ask this question product owner in business okay good product owner but how many product owner do you think have got this product vision strategy we got product managers then yeah yeah so and i'm not saying that product owner should create this vision and the strategy but at least this vision and the strategy should be there and if you haven't got it probably you should ask for it but has but i pretty much can say that if you ask for something some especially to your leaders and the managers how quickly you can get a strategy because there there has to be some kind of strategy isn't it it's just that that, that strategy is not clear or that strategy is not communicated well 
Anybody has used something like business model canvas? Lean canvas, lean UX canvas, wildly mapping and all that. There are tools that can help us in creating these uh, product strategy. With an elevator pitch, anybody has used elevator pitch? Again, it helps us in identification of that what this product is about is. So our product owners, they should be actually be able to ha have this product strategy at least, or at least should be able to communicate about that as well. When you can talk about this product vision and the product strategy, having a strategy, having a goal is just one thing. We should be able to use that thing as well. For an example, if I'm working as a product owner, I always make sure that I'm talking about this product strategy every sprint planning. It takes me maybe three to four minutes, not more than that. Okay, who your customers are, why we are building the product, what is our key value proposition, okay, the, what is our high level outcomes looks like. And now to meet those high level outcomes, guys, this is what our product goal is. To meet this product goal, what could be our next sprint goal? I will talk about again this product strategy and the vision into my sprint review. Okay, no matter how many times I have talked about it, until unless it's not going people's head, it's become this, becoming the second part of their nature. Anybody has ever experienced problem of uh, saying no to the stakeholders? Yeah, one of the biggest tool could be your own strategy and the goals. If you haven't got your own goal, probably you are working on someone else's goal. You cannot tell those people that, okay, go off. I am working on something more important right now because there is nothing for you right now. There is no goal. And having the goal, I think, is one of the best way to say no to your stakeholders. I think sometimes. And again, we are not saying no. We are probably saying not yet. Yeah, because right now our focus is something else, mate. The work that you're bringing is not as per our current focus. Okay. So do you want me to drop my current product goal? What do you think? People will say, no, no, no. This is also important and this is also important. But come on, th th this is not how it works. So you're asking me to my team or myself to work for 12 hours a day over the weekend and all? No, come on, two hours task, maybe it's just a two hour task. Two hours task then turn into two days task and the four days tasks. Yeah? Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about the user experience as well. Do you think user experience can be really, really powerful thing if you add with the scrum? Yep. Anybody has used personas? Yep. Yep. Yeah? If you have used personas, you will see that how powerful tool it is which brings your customers closer to your developers. Yeah, many of the developers, you ask them, what are you working on? Oh, yeah, I'm working on the Jira ticket 169984. <laughs> what you have delivered in the past one month? Oh, yeah, 12 Jira stories and 100 story points. That's what I have delivered. Yeah, and then even go further as well. Let's say they say, oh, yeah, we know the user. Who's the user? Analyst. Analyst of which department are you talking about? I have worked a lot with the banks. They, they use this term like, as an analyst, I want. Which department's analyst are you talking about? Is it the debt management department or it is the credit department or it's the fraud department? Which department analyst are you talking about? Because each analyst has got their different needs, different pains and different other things as well, different jobs. <laughs> yeah? So we cannot treat all the users in the same way. And hence, when we do these personas and use those personas into our whatever you, however you write your product backlog items as a user stories, as an epic, as a feature, it helps. And more importantly, your personas get refined over the time period. If you are just making it a one time activity, sorry, you learn about your users over the time period as well as you deliver the things to them. What do they like? Does this persona really exist? Does that need really exist? Do my users and the customer, they really value the need which we are fixing right now? Anybody has ever delivered 
a product or the feature that never got used by any of your users or the customers? Raise your hand. Only few. But yeah, but it's still the majority. That's fine. Okay. Were you not under the pressure of delivering that feature? Come on, mate. Deadline is approaching. By end of this month, we need this feature. And then everybody, just like feature factories has started, we have delivered the feature. And that feature never got used by any of our users or the customers. Probably what we need is we need to bring back that user centricity and the customer centricity in the work that we do on a daily basis. Who do you think should be involved in creating those personas? Who should create those? UX. UX. Maybe the person who has got the UX skills. And maybe what we can do is probably we can complement our Scrum teams with the UX skills as well. What is the goal of the UX team? If we, in many places we have seen UX team and the delivery team. What is the aim of the UX team? Create the great design. Yeah? If what is the purpose of this delivery team create a great feature but what you need is you need both of it isn't it scrum is good ux is good together they are awesome why we always have to fight yeah but the thing is we love fights isn't it we love those duels a lot and with the, because of this we waste so much of our energy in just talking and fighting okay now Another great part of the user experience thing is, anybody here uh, know about Lean UX by Jeff Goodall, Joshua Sedan? Yeah, awesome book. Yeah, and they talk about that having those smaller experiments. Not every experiment has to be the A-B testing. We can also do the paper prototypes. Yeah, we can also do uh, the feature fakes as well. But more important thing is, you do the experiments to learn about something. And that's where when you are focusing on the user experience, that learning becomes really, really important part. We can learn, and there is a value in the learning as well, I believe. I strongly believe in that. Yeah. Many of the times I feel even our customers, they don't know what they want until unless they see, oh, this is not what I wanted. Yeah, so maybe, we, we need to mit uh, minimize and the mitigate that risk by doing those little experiments before we build that big thing and then we see that, oh, nothing is working. Now, this one, evidence-based management. How many of you know about the evidence-based management EBM framework? So few of you have. Uh, let me show you the picture of the EBM. Uh, there are many more, okay. Uh, EBM framework picture as well. Now. Let me tell you a story about this EBM framework. So last year I got uh, some gig with one banking client with the leadership. And EBM framework helped me to change their mindset to move away from those output based metrics to the outcome based metrics. Uh, raise your hand if you agree that what we measure plays a, one of the most important role in building the agile culture. Couple of people, let me rephrase the question again. That if you feel that what we measure is really, really important for the success of the agile or not. Yeah. Velocity, anybody knows velocity? Yeah. Anybody has seen velocity being misused? Yep. Yeah. Anybody has seen burn down chart being misused? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, and again, how many of your organizations sometimes focus on the resource utilization? Keeping the people busy. If you are, if you are measuring the busyness of the people, you will get the busy people. If you are measuring the value, you will get the value. You get what you measure. And this is why I really like about this EBM framework is that it talks about these four dimensions, four key value areas about that, okay, what is our current value is? What makes our customers happy? What makes our users happy? What make our stakeholders happy? Okay. Then unrealized value, what are the opportunities we see in the market as well? Ability to innovate. What is keeping our teams not effective? Anybody struggle with the technical debt? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you are having the technical debt, your ability to innovate is already low. 
Anybody has got loss of production incidents? If you have got loss of production incident, your ability to innovate is already low. And when we I go through these four key value areas, it help us in understanding, okay, in my context, which area I should focus on. But when I only focus on one area only, I do, I am also creating certain kind of risks as well. If I only focus on the time to market, faster, 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 faster. What happens then? Quality, which is the current value going down. And then probably your technical debt is increasing and your ability to innovate is also going down. So it's all about balancing these four key value areas. That's what EBM is talking about. That yes, you, even though you are focusing on the one or the two key value areas, but remember you are also incorporating certain kind of risk. Are you aware of those risks or not? And hence, you need to identify all the, uh, what are the metrics in those key value areas as well. Okay. I will go back to this, okay. Kanban. How many of you have used Scrum with Kanban? Yeah. Awesome. How many of you seen uh, the daily Scrum, something like this? Oh, yeah, hello, good morning, everybody. I am currently working on the Jira ticket 76984, and uh, uh, after that, I will working on the Jira ticket 66984. Thank you, no impediments. Next person, yeah. Oh yeah, good morning everybody. Yesterday I was working on the Jira ticket 66984 and today I'm going to work on the same ticket. Uh, no no update, uh, thank you. Anybody has seen that? Something like it, where people are talking to the scrum master rather than talking to each other. Entire purpose of the daily scrum is lost. Yeah. I have seen that when we use the scrum with the Kanban, that focus from the individual status update goes away and the focus on the work come back. Where are the blockers are we seeing? Okay, what are the most important item? Okay, I am a developer. Have you seen those kind of uh, silos in our team where I'm a coder, coder don't test. Yeah, yeah. They keep doing more and more, but where the problem is that the blocker is sitting at the testing area okay so instead of picking more and more coding work go and help out those testing people and this is in one of the organization where these silos were that deep rooted using scrum with kanban really helped me to break those silos using those whip limits using the visualization and more importantly using uh, the metrics into the retrospectives as well sometimes we are going into the retrospective with emotions. Yeah, I'm not saying the emotions are bad, but yeah. Some, but I feel that sometimes going to the retrospective with data sometimes is more powerful. Yeah, otherwise we go to the retrospective and people they talk about, oh yeah, management is shit, leadership is shit, nothing, is nothing works in this company. Yeah, but I think if we bring the data, probably they can identify what we can improve upon, where the waste is, where the weight is and Kanban can help us in optimizing the flow of the value. The last one, facilitation. And why I'm bringing this thing right now is because in the past two, three years, I've been only working with the remote teams. Anybody struggle with getting the ideas from introvert people? There are people who, who don't talk at all. Only the loudest people, they keep giving the ideas. Do you think there could be the value in those quieter voices as well? Yeah, and this is why I brought this facilitation because in the, all these scrum things, I think we need a really good facilitation because we need ideas from the people. Yeah, and this is, so liberating structures, I don't know if many of you have heard of it or not, but liberating structures are the one of the great way in bringing these quieter voices, including everyone into our discussions, one, two, four, all, giving the opportunity for everyone to give their ideas to the people. And I think this is what Scrum needs. Scrum requires ideas, isn't it? In the retrospective, in the planning, in the refinement, even in the daily scrums as well. Yeah. In the reviews, sometimes, have you seen that, okay, stakeholders are coming to this sprint reviews, nobody even talks anything. They don't even give the feedback. They say, how was it? Yeah, good, okay, go back. 
but but can 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 we ask them some open ended question maybe give them some kind of surveys we showed you three different features one two and three tell us what did you like about it what did you not like about it can you rate it out of 1 to 10 out of these three features which one was your most favorite and why it's about the conversation it's about the discussions that we got and i think especially in the remote world we definitely need a strong facilitation yeah so guys i think these and there are many more as well xp practices there are so many other different things maybe some scaling techniques we can add on top of it as well but what i'm trying to say identify and add your infinity stones to the glove of the scrum that you got okay it's empty it's incomplete and you do need to identify those little things that can help your scrum in generating the value don't do the scrum just for the sake of doing it yeah we have already seen so many teams that which are infested by this zombie scrum or the mechanical scrum probably we need to bring back that purpose as well which is all about delivering the value and for that you need to identify the value and the measuring the value as well and uh, that's pretty much me any questions